right. Well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you may be joining us. Um, we had a little hiatus. We were getting to camp, our, our second home uh, for all of us, whether you're a staff member, a former staff member, camper, or a parent, uh, getting ready to send your kids uh, to their second home at Camp IHC. And I got to tell you what, it's, it's, it's an exciting place to be doing the podcast from our second home and, and seeing it greening up and, and just the fresh air and the birds chirping, it's happening. So, but with me, what a great way to kind of get back into the role of things. Um, I have Lauren and we had been having a conversation and we said, wait, this conversation is something that's like super important, super imperative, and let's do a podcast because that's what we like to do these days. So Lauren, thank you for joining uh, the IC podcast. Today. Thank you for having me. And I'm thrilled to be at camp with you um, and with our leadership team. And yes, yeah, so we're here. We're actually very excited today because the CDC just released some guidance saying that vaccinated people didn't really have to wear masks. Um, obviously, a few exceptions to that, but obviously, we were dancing around our office. So um, watch this space. But yeah, so this podcast is really predominantly for our staff. Um, particularly our new staff, um, people who are absolutely new to the IHC community. And let me start by saying, um, you know, one of the blessings of COVID and having to take a step away, right, is backing mm -hmm. off of something sometimes gives you more clarity than what you would have if you're in a, you know, 100 miles per hour, year in, year out. Um, and I think that, that COVID and not opening camp last year has given us some pause and given us some time for assessment and reflection. And, um, and here we are at camp, and now we're in the process of welcoming some of our new staff, right, Mark? We had a number of new people to our community arrive at camp. So mm -hmm. that's the good news to all the staff yeah, members out yeah. there. I know it's some happening. of you, yeah, so some of you are still waiting on visas and you're waiting on travel channels opening up. Hang in there. You are almost there. And everything that we're hearing is very positive. Just hang in there. And the good news is, is that a lot of people are getting visas approved and people are actually starting to arrive at camp, which prompted this podcast. Um, but yeah, like we recognize, I think more than ever before, because we've had this chance to step out of, you know, the, the regular cycle of camp to acknowledge how difficult it can be for a new staff member to arrive at camp for the first time. Um, and we all love camp and we're all so familiar with camp and want you to be part of that that sometimes I think we forget or maybe we haven't taken enough care about helping you ease in and really helping you maybe know what to expect on the front end, right, Mark? Exactly. So yeah. we, we wanted to talk through what is completely normal, like, you know, about arriving at camp and what you might be feeling, you know, in relation to that and just guide you through what we found to be helpful over the course of the years, you know, that we've been doing this. Um, so I think that's the kind of backstory, right? Yeah. And I think the, you know, some of the words that, that came up is nerves, anxiety, anxious, and, you know, you and I just bouncing those ideas back that nervousness, anxiety is 100% normal. It's what we do with that energy and the psychology behind it. And even from our own stories, I think, Lauren, you and my, myself, we were first chair. Now, we're removed from that, right? And like you said, with, with that clarity of having that pause to come back and know and see new staff members showing up and that sort of wide-eyed, like, wow, it, you know, I've seen the videos, I've heard the podcast, and I'm here, and it's real, and these people are human, you know, and then there's a caring and a, and a, and a support structure but how do you how do you get that across in, in an interview? How do you help mm -hmm. them? And that's where this conversation starts. It's like your psychology background and acknowledging that the brain just can create stories and can create like, oh my God, I'm never gonna make it. And then but they're here, you know? So I think the nerves is is almost like this nervousness, the excitement, the butterflies. Um, you know, how do we help staff 
manage that to find that balance um, of expectations. You know, any kind of thoughts on that area? Well, I actually am annoyed with myself because I forgot my notepad. And you know how I like to write myself little (laughs) notes as we talk. And I think that your last segment is really this podcast, isn't it? And I should have had my notepad so I could write down each thing that you just said. And then we could have tackled it individually. Yeah. So I'm going to rely a little bit on my memory, um, you know, but I think we need to break this down for for our staff members. Um, mm-hmm. So let's first of all recognize that we've all been through a really challenging twelve to you know fourteen months, and that life just hasn't resembled normal life. Yeah. And obviously, if you're coming to work at camp, you know you're most likely. Um, in the age cohort of 18 to 25 or somewhere around there and socialization and being out and about and being with people and peers and it's it's where your life is at right is that Mm -hmm. that that you guys in many ways have suffered the most through this whole thing i mean obviously let's set aside people who have lost people and lost businesses and you know that's horrendous But you guys, in terms of the social, you know, um, fallout of this whole thing, I think you guys have been affected the most. Um, Those of you who are in college, you know, university, like those years have been stolen from you. and, and, And that isn't lost on us here at camp. So not only have you, you know, chosen to enter into a new community and anything that's new can also be scary, right? Yes. But you're also coming, you know, off of a period of time that hasn't been normal in any ways. So we're kind of going from like zero to 60. So um, that being said, you know, you'll watch the videos like Mark said and you'll be saying, oh, this place sounds great. They want me to belong there. They want to embrace who I am and be part of their family and that all sounds awesome Um, but let's put a little kind of word of caution Um, we will be ready to receive you from the get-go but we also understand and we want you to understand that it may take you a little bit of time to get there to that place of feeling like you really belong, that you get this and that you fit in and all of those things that that feeling of belonging, we want that for you and we know that you'll get there. But don't be disheartened if it doesn't happen immediately, that there's there's a lot of power in the process, right? And yeah, what is absolutely. built up over time usually ends up being the most solid, you know, relationships in our life. Mm -hmm. So when you arrive at camp, there will be a member of our leadership there to greet you. Um, You know, there will be a point person who is going to be taking care of you and making sure that you have what you need. But it's also okay if off the bat you don't feel completely comfortable right? It's a new place. It's new people. Camp is a very unique, you know, experience that give yourself that time to transition in to your new surroundings um, and utilize as a support, you know, when you need us. If you lean in, and I know we hear this a lot, lean into the discomfort, you know, I don't know how many times I've used that a lot, right? Yeah. It's getting old, I know. But, but, but it's true. But the truth, yeah. exactly, <laughs> it's true. If you lean in yeah. to that, you're going to come out the other side in ways that you can't even imagine, right? That it'll give back to you. You know, I have this really, I have this term that I love, if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. Yeah. Um, and I believe that, 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 if everything is easy breezy, what progress do we really make? How are we really, you know, progressing and evolving in our life if everything is so easy? That sometimes it's through the struggle where we find the greatest growth. And I encourage you to lean into that and also utilize the support systems that are put in place to support you, 
Right, Mark? I mean, how many times has a staff member sat down in front of you and said, I've decided that I'm leaving, it's not for me, but it's the first time they've brought it to you. Yeah, yeah and, that's, and that's where this, if anything, is this open channel of communication, that there's a network, that there's a team, that we really do want to coach you up. I know Joel says that a lot, and I love that, is we want to coach you up, we want to coach you in, we want to help you gain and see why camp um, invites and has returners that come back and people feel that family, not just when they're at camp, but whether you're in Europe, Australia, parts of you, where, wherever we've had staff members, there's a connection that happens because people leaned in um, as you said that. But when we get side, <laughs> you know, just like slap on the side of like, Hey, this isn't for me. And it's the, and we're like, well, where'd this come from? You know, out of nowhere, I sometimes feel as though, what did I do wrong? You know, where did I, um, you know, fail this person? Um, and to your point, I really want to make sure it's a shared responsibility that staff know coming in is like, we're going to give, you're going to give. But if one of us isn't giving, um, you know, we're, we're going to ask, we're going to, you know, seek out, but you got to, you got to be okay and have, be a little brave. You know, and that's what we've talked about in our interviews and setting up that it's okay to be brave here because we're not going to make fun of you. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to haze you. Or uh, judge you. you. Know, judge you, right? Um, bring bring the best version of you. And that's the other phrase I love we say, and it's meaningful. Yeah, people are like, be the best version of you. Like, well, who is you? Like, we hired you, <laughs> you know? Exactly. Um, for, the, for those purposes. And we've evolved, you know, over the last decade, you know, I don't think any organization, any family, you know, is perfect. And I think we all have a lot of room for growth. And IHC certainly has. And we've made massive attempts to grow and evolve and progress, you know, um, as we've, you know, delved deeper into our tenure of being the directors of the camp. You know, you, me, Maddie, Mark. Mm. Uh, you are Mark, Joel. Um <laughs> You know, but I, I I listened to a podcast the other day and it was talking about like, you know, organizations used to be successful through um, muscle power, right? Having workers show up early, work late, go, go, go. It was like the muscle power that made businesses or organizations successful. And then we moved into the 20th century and it became about the brain, right, is that we were head smart and, and, and businesses and organizations progressed because people used their head, right? The next generation of businesses and organizations that are going to be successful are going to use their heart. Mm -hmm. And that resonated with me because I think that's the direction that IHC is going in, is that we recognize that the heart and the connectivity and the connection and the sense of belonging, basically belonging, showing up, who are you, not fitting into the mold, but the mold that encompassing you is what is going to differentiate, you know, successful organizations in, in the generations to come. And it resonated with me, Mark, because I thought, well, I didn't have the words to articulate that before this podcast, but I for sure, I'm borrowing that because yeah. that's exactly what I think that we're trying to accomplish, that we want to be an organization of the heart. And we're asking you to partner with us in doing that because we're amazing problem solvers. We're, we're good humans. Like we're kind, mm -hmm. like we're reasonable, but we don't know how to read your mind. So just talk to us. Um, so for, so yeah. for the staff member that you know shows up and you know along those hearts i've heard you say it let's start with kindness um you know that's coming in saying i'm not the strongest um mm -hmm. i you know I'm, here's the orientation and there's someone that's swimming faster than me um they can boat faster they're a better artist and i'm you know like the focus you know for us and in these conversation is you're part of an optimal performing team and mm -hmm. i think we've used that language mm -hmm. i definitely love the attributes is your strength is here your weakness okay and weakness can be construed as like oh he's weak like that's not what we're saying we're saying you're just not the best 
you know, mine, organization, not Mark, Mark's best strength, <laughs> right? Creativity, maybe I get a higher score on that. But then you pair me with you, Lauren, and Joel, and Maddie, and this leadership team, and, you know, and just down, 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 we all bring something to the table. So from a nervous, from an anxiety, if we look at that heart, and there's those staff members that are just so compassionate and so nurturing, and they can learn to be better organizers from those who are really good organizers, and those who aren't the best at nurturing yet, but can still develop those. I think sometimes when I hear too is what you're saying is like, oh, well, if I don't have a heart yet, can I still work at camp? I'm really <laughs> strong, you know, um, but can I do this? So sometimes that's the anxiety I'll hear in staff members like I'm a really great rock climber, but I don't know how to mountain bike. Can I still come to camp? You know, mm -hmm. I'm really great with seven to nine year olds. I'm just not the best with middle school kids, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, that's almost your heart piece mm -hmm. ties directly into that what you bring to camp and maybe that helps alleviate our you know helps our staff alleviate some of that anxiety mm -hmm. and stress mm -hmm. and you know i remember distinctly a conversation that i had with um a, i think it was an outdoor adventure opt staff member a few years ago and he was a really talented guy but he was a lone ranger right that he was successful and um you know, had accomplished, um, he had an awesome skill set, um, but he didn't know how to work as part of a team, right? He didn't know how to be part of a, a community in a way, right? And that's okay. That we can work with because what he said was, I am struggling to fit in to this setup. Like, I... I'm, I'm a lone ranger. Like I do what I want. I, you know, I only answer to myself, you know, I, you know, I'm not used to this, you know, check in or check out, like, and for our new right. stuff, like we obviously have to know where you are because if you haven't checked in, we're coming to look for you in the woods because you're lost. Right. So right, right. when I go to bed and Mark goes to bed, we like to know that everybody's safe. Um, you know, well, most of you aren't checking in with an adult before you go to bed, right? So Correct. obviously yeah, camp yeah. is extremely different, but he also had a really good skill set. He wanted to do well, but he was able to communicate like, this is what I struggle with here. And he also like, you know, if it's fair to say, Mark, like he didn't really like how camp ran, like in his yeah. opinion, like he didn't really like that. And when I talked that out with him, well, this is ultimately an experience for kids and it has to be fun but we have to keep them safe he was like oh no no no! i think they can't run really well like for the kids like i don't know maybe just staff don't need to check in and then i was like well <laughs> well maybe they don't but let me tell you about the staff that's cars are broken down or have got lost or have had an emergent situation right. guess who's coming to save them that would be me and if yeah. i don't know that they're where they are and he was like oh so he but he needed i guess what i'm saying is he needed a little bit more help understanding why we have the things in place that we have. Um, and, but he was also wearing, willing to share openly with us about that so that we could address it with him. And then in the end, he made it through, right? And he, he made it, it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And, but Lauren, to what you said there, um, goes back to the original conversation. There's a staff member who comes to us and says, I'm going home. This is not for me. Totally just hits us out of the blue. And then there's a staff member that we have conversations with. You coach, you coach this particular one up. And we worked out a plan. And he w ended up being incredibly successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so someone who in 10 years ago, what would we have said maybe in a different version at a different time said, oh, okay, you know, it's not for you. Fine. Mm -hmm. That's not working with your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. working with your heart and your mm -hmm. mind is saying, wait, no, no, you're meant to be here. Mm -hmm. Let's find this path and, and, and to be able to coach that through. So mm -hmm. telling staff and asking staff to sort of have that patience, which now with COVID, I think we've all gained a lot more patience um, or an opportunity to learn about patients um, with regards to things. There's that ability and space to then now say, okay, you have patience. Now you just need that voice mm -hmm. that you're not afraid to say something or ask something or send us that email saying, Hey, I'm, I'm nervous about this or travel or I'm, I'm embarrassed to ask that 
that I don't get the staff travel form. <laughs> totally. <laughs> ask, that right? would have been know, me. Like, that would have yeah. been me at 19. You know it. I, I would have been like, wait, you sent me a form? You would have been like, yeah. yeah, we sent it five times. I'd be like, right, well, I missed that one. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that I made it to Newark and got a you know, subway and found my way to the bus station and got to Honesdale is the biggest wonder of the world. Wonder. And look where I where, And look, where and now, now I run the camp. <laughs> I mean, that's maybe not great advertising right there, but um, yeah. no, don't be embarrassed. Like if we're, you know, that, that, that it's okay. Like if you're not, if that's not your thing and we can help you with that. Um, yeah. Just at the same time, if, you know, um, you know, if it's, if, if it's not organization, if it is connecting, if it's making friends, a lot of people find it hard to make friends, finding your people like that. If you line up our leadership team, we weren't all social butterflies and knew how to do it easily. We worked at it over time. Some of us did, but a lot of us didn't, you know, um, you, I think what's important for us, for our staff to know is that our leadership team is a really true reflection of our staff population. And I think that one of the real secret sauces of IHC success, you know, we have obviously there's other camps in our industry. We have competitors and they look in and they say, how are they so successful? What is their secret sauce? I think part of it is we were in your shoes. Yeah. We didn't, a lot of us didn't go to camp as campers. We didn't grow up here. We came here as 19 year olds to work with children. And we know what it feels like to be in your shoes. We have a shared experience. And because that experience for each of us was different, it has guided us to create the experience for you guys that will tap into supporting you and the things that you don't feel comfortable with and helping pull out the things that you do feel comfortable with, right? Because we've all, in some capacity, been in every situation that a staff member can throw at us. And what may help that is also, Lauren, is when we talk about orientation, when we talk about staff arrival, when I say that we, that's the encompassing leadership team that works year round. It's not like, oh, here's arrival. I mean, there's literally a, a debate in a positive way. What I mean by that is like, well, when I came over, it was pretty easy. Well, when I came over, I couldn't figure it out. Okay, well, there's gotta be a balance in between that. You know, what would make sense? What looks good? Hey, for orientation, how are we gonna make sure the extroverts and the introverts, how do we maintain physicality? Like it's almost like we want people to realize that this isn't just we throw it at the wall and say, hey, let's go play camp, right? Do you want to maybe speak to that process? Because I think that might even alleviate because, you know, at other jobs, it's like, hey, I'm here. I got hired. I work nine to five. I show up. I do this training and then I work until I stop working there. Whereas camp is this finality. We have this experience and this opportunity um, to bring people together for, you know, 10 weeks, you know, for some it's eight weeks or nine weeks, depending on the role you have. And there's this orientation and then there's the summer and then the adventures begin again with your new best friend. So <laughs> maybe that would help alleviate the anxiety a little bit. Just sort of saying is like, what is a window into the, <laughs> you know, right, the right. process? Yeah, because there's a formula that we know works really well, right? So, um, so you know, the reason the IHC has always, not just in a COVID year, but we've always started orientation very early. Like our orientation for, you know, outdoor adventure has always started pretty much in May, right? Yeah. So, and then waterfront and, you know, group leaders and, you know, whatever, we all start to trickle in. But part of the reason that we, you know, yes, we want to assess hard skills and make sure that, you know, our ultimately you and your campers are going to be safe. We want to start small and cultivate a, a kind of understanding of this is a place where we care about every individual's experience, right? Is that we want to start small and helping reveal to you this is what the culture is of this place, right? Because culture is everything. And our culture, 
its foundation is about having a positive positive experience um, in the place, whether it's how you felt when you arrived at camp, who received you, how did they make you feel, what was your first experience in the dining hall, like, okay, you want to know where your lockbox is, did the person in the office make you feel that you were being a pest, or were, did they make you feel like you were welcome, right, so we care that everybody has a positive experience and we build upon that. But we want to start small because we want it to feel personal. We don't want you to feel that you get lost in a sea of people. We want you to feel that you, as the individual that you are, who brings your own unique skill set and your own unique personality, that we are glad that you are here. And we want to invest in you so that in the end, you can feel like a sense of belonging to the bigger place, right? Love it. Um, and then, of course, you know, over the course of time, people trickle in. And one thing that I'll talk to the staff about um, in orientation, I start, because I always like have to say, like I'll make announcements, you know, Joel and I are very upfront yeah. directors, as you are, Mark. But I start, I'm glad that our staff come in small chunks because I get really nervous. Believe it or not, I get really nervous talking in public. And I like to start small because then I like get every year, like I've been doing this for over a decade, but like every year I'm like, oh, I'm glad it's a small group because then I can like get my sea legs and like get going again. Anyway, by the time like the whole, you know, staff is here, we've, we've, it's been, an evolution, hasn't it? It's been like starting small, adding to it. Every layer of staff is now aligned behind the same goal, right? Yeah. Of like positive experience um, and hopefully feels a sense of connectivity to you and to Maddie and to me and to Joel and to our leadership um, because only when you feel that sense of belonging and importance, will you be able to pass that along to our campers, right? Is that you're the influence and you have to have experienced that for yourself in order to be able to give that to other people. So that's the, you know, methodology right. behind it. But we don't always get it right. But we're not going to know that we're not getting it right unless you tell us, right? Because we also understand that a one si we have this formula. But like we said, going back to the beginning, it doesn't always land for some people. Mm -hmm. And if it's not landing for you for whatever reason, that's a roadblock. But we are really good at getting rid of roadblocks. But like I say, we're not good at reading minds. So if you tell us this is not working for me, the likelihood is that we can navigate that with you, remove that roadblock, and then you will never look back. And I have this saying at the end of the summer, I often say to staff, your camp experience, whether you're a one-year staff member, you're kind of like a one and done, we call it, or you come back for like 10 years or whatever, <laughs> your years at camp will haunt you in the most wonderful ways. No matter what you do in your life, you will always be haunted by the beautiful memories that you had in Northeastern Pennsylvania in a little slice of land whose zip code is 18417. You will never escape that. And it's so precious, it's so valuable, and it will inform so many pieces of your life to come amazing and and again if that doesn't ease some of the anxiety reduce some of the nerves to more excitement and bubbling over but also hopefully what everyone's heard here in this podcast lauren is an invitation mm -hmm. it's an invitation to an experience um to be kind that our goal is to be kind that we're not perfect we're humans mm -hmm. um but through those imperfections we grow and uh and we'll have an amazing summer so nerves of steel or not mm -hmm. you, know, you know get excited uh for an amazing summer um 
at IHC. I mean, just, yep. just even this, I mean, I don't know, people can't see us, but I think I've smiled this, this whole time, mm -hmm. right? You're smiling mm -hmm. this whole time. Mm -hmm. And anytime we have these conversations about new staff coming in or staff or relationships, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it keeps circling back, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Listen to the podcast, listen to the stories, listen to the experience, listen to the campers. Um, you and Joel, you know, preach it. Everyone preaches it. Camp IHC is built on relationships. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The camps that with what we do. Um, how do you like, go from there? Yeah, <laughs> and like and and trust us, right? To trust us, and that's a leap of faith. It's always a leap of faith to trust people, but yeah. trust us. We want to do right by you. We know that we can do right by you, and just give us the opportunity to do right by you, right? Amazing. Camp is ready to receive you. We're ready to welcome you home, whether it's for the first time or if you are a returner. Um, visas are being processed. The world is beginning to open up. Um, believe it or not that we're able to vaccinate you. If you're not vaccinated, we will be able to vaccinate you on site if you wish. Um, that's amazing advancement. Yeah. Um, but we're ready. Camp is coming. We yeah, can't wait. And, uh, the, the pool's clean. The water <laughs> slides up. You know, we're, we're ready. <laughs> Lauren, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing such great wisdom um, awesome. on the IC podcast. It is always a pleasure to sit down with you. Um, and in this case, being at our second home. I so, know. You're the best, Mark. Thank you. You're the best. All right. No, you're you. the best. No, you're the best. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone.